Hello friends, welcome to our broadcast. I am Larry Hutton, your host. This is Limitless Life, where we learn how to be happy and learn to live an abundant life, a wonderful life, a life with, with God as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We learn to live the way God wants us to live, and that's healthy and wealthy and wise and full of love and full of peace and full of joy and self-control and goodness and gentleness and patience and oh, all the wonderful things that God has for us in this life. God wants us to live this life as if, if we were in heaven. When Jesus said, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He wants you to go ahead and live heaven here on earth before you even get to heaven. And if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can do that uh, because He's alive. All the other uh, religions of the world, of the earth, they serve dead gods. But we serve a living, risen Savior. He's alive, He's well, and uh, He's a, a wonderful Lord. He only wants good for you. So, we, we always uh, take uh, subjects on this program that deal with our life now, deal with uh, things we do now, because I've just decided years ago, bless God, I'm going to be a happy person. I'm going to be a positive, happy, uh, peaceful, joyous, fun, loving type person. I'm, no, I'm not perfect. You can ask my wife. <laughs> but uh, but I, I just decided, you know, hey, since Jesus died on the cross for my sins, he bore my sins, he bore my sicknesses, he bore my poverty and lack, and he bore my depression, and he bore my bad temper and anger problems, and he bore my hurt feelings, and he bore my worries and my stress, and he bore my guilt and my shame. He bore all those things, so I'm not going to bear those things. I am going to be a happy person. I'm going to be a lovable person. I'm going to be a fun person. I'm going to have, I'm going to enjoy life. And that's the kind of life God wants us to live. In fact, I was thinking about before I came on the air, you, you've probably read Proverbs 4 before, Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, a 10, where God says, attend to my words, incline your ear to my sayings, don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They're life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. And I was thinking, and I'm just thinking, th being a, a thankful heart, you know, just thank you, Lord. Thank you that I can attend to your words. I can incline my ear to your sayings. That's the word of God. Um, I cannot let them depart from my eyes and always keep my eyes focused and be looking to the word of God for the answers in every situation through the day. Uh, so attend to his words and clyde my ear. Don't let them depart from my eyes. Keep them in the midst of my heart. He says, for their life to you when you take hold of them. Their life to you, life to your marriage and life to your, life to your finances and life to your emotions and life to every area. And he says, and health to all your flesh. So God's actually given us a, a uh, recipe, if you will, how we can be healed in our physical bodies and how we can even walk in health in our physical bodies. And I was just meditating on that and thanking God. Lord, thank you. Thank you that, that we can have your life in our marriage and have a heavenly marriage. And we can have your life in our finances and be debt free and out of debt and plenty of money left over to be a blessing to others. And we can have your life in our emotions where we live in peace and joy 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. Yeah, we can do that. I do it. I, I know because I'm, I'm a living testimony of that. So um, if you don't believe me, ask my wife. Don't believe me, ask my daughter. I don't have down days. I don't have stress-filled days, strife-filled days. I have all of those moments, but God showed me when those moments come, He showed me how to stop them. So I stop them in their tracks. I, don't, I have moments of stress, moments of depression, moments of fear, moments of panic, moments of hurt feelings, moments of bad temper, anger, moments, I, moments, but boy, I keep them short. God showed me how to keep them short. Praise God. So I don't have days. I just don't have days like that. I refuse to have them. Glory to God. You're looking at a happy camper. <laughs> Praise God. And one thing that keeps you happy and that make you enjoy life on earth is understanding the, what we've been talking about now for the last, how many programs? I guess seven programs. This is actually the eighth program. We started talking about our enemy. The Bible talks about Satan as our enemy. He is evil. He is wicked. And he is real. We talked about all that the last seven programs studying what the scripture said about him. 
and why it's important. In fact, I gave you 25 good biblical scripture reasons why it's important to study about the devil and his ways. Uh, let me give them to you. He wants to buffet us. He wants to hinder us. He wants to destroy our flesh. He wants to carry out his works in our lives. He wants to use his power against us. He wants to devour us. He wants to steal from us. He wants to kill us. He wants to destroy the areas of our lives. He wants to use his devices and get an advantage over us. He wants to trick us. He wants to harm us with, with fiery spears and arrows. He wants to snare or entrap us like prey. He wants to steal the word out of our hearts. He wants to attach spirit of infirmities to our bodies so that we'd be sick and diseased. He wants to keep his works in the dark so we don't know it's him working hidden from us. He wants to look like an angel of light and his helpers like Christian teachers and preachers. The Bible says we are to resist him. We're to be on our guard against him. We're to be steadfast with our faith in resisting him. We're not to give him place in our lives. We're to cast him out. We're to stand against him. We're to use our authority over all his power. We're supposed to use our faith as a shield to quench all of his fiery darts and, and stop all of his attacks. Um, the God, the, another reason God talks about the devil 161 times in the New Testament so that's enough reasons why we ought to want to learn about him. And since it is in the Word of God, it's part of the Word of God, then it's profitable. Remember Timothy? Profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness, which means it's going to help complete us and train us and be ready to be kingdom of God enforcers. Now, all of those passages that I just quoted, those are all scriptural passages and reasons. If God says all that about the devil, then there has to be a purpose you and I need to get a hold of. We need to understand that he's out there, he's real, he's attacking, he's using his tricks. And uh, if we do understand, we can stop him in his tracks. That's why God said, submit to God and resist the devil. Well, you can't resist the devil if you don't even know it's the devil doing it. A lot of Christians think it's God doing it, so they don't resist the devil. And, what, and guess what? James 4, 7, resist the devil and he'll flee. So what's the opposite? You don't resist him and guess what? He doesn't flee. And then you think God's trying to work good in your life and it's the devil trying to destroy things in your life. So that's why it's so important. That's why we're doing this series. And uh, uh, we found out he's, a, he's an enemy. He wants to deceive and destroy. Remember, one of the main reasons I'm teaching this is because we found out in the last days, the days you and I are living in, the last days that... There are going to be Christians that depart Christianity. In other words, they're born again. They love the Lord, but they're going to leave Jesus. They're going to leave God. They're going to leave Christianity altogether. The Bible says so. And it's because Satan deceives them. So if we're, if we're up on the scriptures and understand how Satan deceives and the works he does, then we can stop him from doing that. We don't have to be the ones that are decept, deceived and fall away from God in these last days. So, uh, we read in Isaiah uh, 14, verses 9 through 17, about how Satan was lifted up in pride and how he was cast out of heaven. Then we read in Ezekiel 28, and we looked at, we looked at uh, Satan's before and after pictures. <laughs> I didn't say that last program when we were, but last couple of programs. But, but think about Ezekiel 28. It, you know, it talks about he was... He, uh, you seal up the sum. Uh, you're perfect in beauty. Your, your garments covered with every precious gem and you were perfect in all your ways. So there's his before picture. <laughs> and then, uh, then we came to his after picture after he sinned, remember? And, and he got poof, cast out of heaven. Uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus was... Uh, actually watching that take place. Remember, and he saw, he said, I saw lightning, Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Why? Because Satan was the bright morning star. That's what Lucifer meant, morning star. So he was bright and clear and shining for the glory of God. Had the glory all about him and around him and in him and everything else, created in the likeness of God. But after sin, when sin came, Death came. Remember what James said. Let me look at. Let me have you look at it real quick. James 1, 15. Uh, I'll read from the King James. Then, when lust has conceived, see. Remember, we read in those uh, passages in Isaiah and Ezekiel where Satan wanted. He wanted to be God. He lifted up himself against God, and he got in pride and all that stuff. Well, he was lusting to be like God, and he already was. Didn't even have to. He's already like God, but he was lusting to be God. 
and take God's place. And so this says in James 1 15, then when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it, it is finished, it brings forth death. So Satan was cast out of heaven. Lightning. Jesus said lightning like he was like lightning that fell. From, lightning is because when he started, you know, remember, he was the bright morning star. Pfft. God cast him and all the brightness. He left it all behind, Pfft. hit the earth and he was dark. He was dead. Death, spiritual death, spiritual separation from God. And then the last program, we were in Genesis chapter 3. We, we started looking at the very first place where, where Satan is mentioned in Scripture. So let's pick it back up here in Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent, verse 1, the serpent, that remember that Hebrew word means snake. The snake was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he spoke to Eve and said, Yes, has God said... You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So he was tempting her and he was trying to get her to doubt what God said. The woman said to the serpent, uh, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said you shall not eat of it. Very interesting the way this is spoken. I, I, I really don't believe Adam was with Eve. <laughs> Uh, just the way this plays out. We've always read this and we've always just thought, well, Eve was, Adam was there and he listened to everything the devil said and didn't resist the devil, and didn't tell the devil to shut up. He just listened to everything, every lie he said and kept tempting Eve and kept tempting, kept tempting him. Adam and just sat there and listened to him and didn't resist him or rebuke him or didn't, didn't uh, enforce, you know, have dominion like he had. No, I don't really believe that I, because... The woman, the way she said, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree that is in the middle, it didn't sound like they were standing next to it. it sounded like, remember, the garden was miles and miles and miles and miles and miles wide and deep and long. And so she could have been miles away from the middle of the garden by yourself walking around. There wasn't danger. There was no dangerous <laughs> no, no, nothing dangerous had ever happened, right? So she wasn't afraid of any danger. And uh, anyway, she says, but of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, just the way she said that implies they weren't standing next to it. She didn't just say, but this tree. So it doesn't kind of sound like they were standing in the middle of the garden. Anyway, that's another, that's another thing. <laughs> anyway, the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it lest you die. And the serpent then said, woman, remember he's talking to woman, doesn't even sound like Adam's there. You shall not surely die, for God knows that in the die you, day that you eat of it, your, your eyes are going to be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now it says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, well, when was that? It doesn't say it happened right that moment. It said when. So if they weren't in the middle of the garden, it was at a later time when maybe her and Adam were walking and they came up to the middle of the garden. They saw that tree. And so she started looking at that thing. And it says when she saw the tree was good for food, whenever that was, and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit of thereof, did eat, and gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. So here, this passage, we have this good-looking serpent. <laughs> Remember, he, he sealed up the sum of beauty. And so we, we know that Satan understood beauty. He understood what gorgeous looked like. And he remember he could transform himself into an angel of light. So he came up to Eve looking good. And we talked about in the last program about how it was very interesting how snakes could talk and Eve didn't think it weird or anything. We talked about that last time. So <laughs> that was that was humorous anyway. But um, anyway, she starts carrying on a conversation. And, and what does Satan do? What is what does the devil do? He starts working on the thoughts of Eve to sow doubt in her mind about the integrity of God and his word. Notice verse 1 says he was subtle. You know what the word subtle means? It means in the Hebrew, it means cunning in a crafty or bad sense. Cunning in a bad sense or crafty in a bad sense. So the devil says, 
Hey, Eve, uh, didn't God say you could eat from every tree in the garden? He, he, he starts her thinking about what God said. She responds, look at verse 3. Um, well, he said we can eat fruit from every tree except the one in the middle. He told us not to eat from it uh, or even touch it. Because if we do, it will cause us to die. Now, now let's, let me just stop right there. Stop right there. Look at the last thing she said here in verse 3. It will cause us to what? Come on. Cause us to what? Die. Cause us to die. Well, what in the world did she mean by die? Nobody had ever died. She had never seen death. What did it even mean to die? <laughs> Where, where in the world did she even get that information she's giving to Satan? Well, let's, let's back up in Genesis 2. Go back a chapter to Genesis 2. And let's look at verse 16 and 17. Look at verses 16 and 17. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. God is talking to Adam here. Remember, Eve does not hear this conversation. She doesn't come along until verse 22. So she's not there. Adam and God are talking. And God's telling Adam this. The King, the King James Bible says, In the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. If you look up the Hebrew word that's used here for die, it means die, it means kill, it means dead, it means death, it means destroy. Um, but God, when you look up the Hebrew, God doesn't use the Hebrew word once. He uses the Hebrew word twice for die signifying two deaths. In fact, uh, let me read a couple other translations. The Young's literal translation of the Bible, it says, dying you do die. Uh, the literal translation says, dying you shall die. In other words, when God told Adam that to disobey him would mean Death, he meant two kinds of death. He meant both spiritual death and then physical death. You see, it was impossible for Adam to die physically unless something happened on the inside spiritually that would affect the outside. Now, someone may ask why. Well, because when God created man, uh, as an eternal being, he created a body for him, breathed into him his life, his spirit, eternally, eternal being. He, he, he made this body to live in it. And as long as the spirit part of his being was like God, you know, full of light, full of life, then his body, the outward man, would live forever. God created man in his image and his likeness. He was like God. He could not die physically unless his spirit man was separated from the life of God. Satan knew that. He knew what disobeying God would cause. Why? He had experienced it himself. <laughs> yeah, when he sinned, he was separated from God, which means, which means he no longer had God's light. He no longer had God's glory. He no longer had God's life. So, so he cunningly, remember he's, he's referred to as a snake, deceptive, cunningly, crafty. Uh, so he cunningly devises a plan to lead 
this human being that's created in the likeness and glory of God, he, 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 he devises this plan to lead him into disobedience. When man sinned, death entered into his spirit. And he died spiritually. This is spiritual death. He died spiritually. Spiritual death is simply separation from the light and light and glory of God. Romans 5, 12, let's look at that. By one man, talking about Adam, by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. S talking about spiritual death. And so death, spiritual death, passed upon all men for all have died spiritually. Hmm. That means that man was separated from God by death. Death is darkness. God is life and life. So death separated man from God. We, we can see this separation that's taken place, even in scriptures in the New Testament, where words are used. For example, Romans 5.10 says we've been reconciled to God. Uh, also in 1 Peter 2.25, we've been Retur we've returned to Jesus, the captain of our salvation. Uh, these, these words show, you know, this word reconciled, this word return. This shows a separation. Uh, spiritual death is spiritual separation from God. Adam died spiritually. Then later on, he died physically. When we die physically... Uh, we die because we're separated from God. Because he was dead on the inside, he was separated from the life that used to be on the inside of him. So death worked inside of him. Romans 5, 12 tells us that death came into Adam by his sin. Then because he was dead on the inside, he died physically. Even though it was over 900 years later, it still tells us that he died. His body was not designed to do that and would never have died, would have lived forever until sin came. All right, let's, let's go on. So, so God tells Adam, Adam, you can eat as much as you want from every tree in the garden, except for one, Adam. See, look, look Adam, see that tree over there? I call it knowledge, good and bad. Uh, I don't want you eating from that one tree. And if you do, it's going to cause you to die twice. First on the inside and then on the outside. Now, with that in mind, I want you to go back to the conversation that Eve is having uh, with, with this snake. Remember, Eve was not with Adam when God told him that to disobey and eat that fruit, you're going to die twice. So Adam must have explained it to Eve. And then Eve is now carrying on this conversation with the snake and, and says, well, God told us not to eat of the tree in the middle of the garden because it'll cause me to die twice. And what does Satan do? Satan keeps working on her thoughts, trying to make her believe something other than what God said. It's the same thing he tries to do to you and me today. And if we don't know the word of God well, then guess what? Satan can deceive you and get you to quit believing it or get you to believe it wrongly. So he keeps trying to make Eve believe something that other than what God said. He's trying to sow doubt in her mind is what he's doing. So in Genesis 3, 4, he says, after she says, well, you know, if I eat of that tree, I'll die twice. Verse 4, Satan says, no, that won't happen. You're not going to die, die. <laughs> You're not going to die twice. And then he continues in verse 5 to work on her thoughts. Come on, Eve. God knows that when you eat the fruit of that tree, your eyes will be open. Here's the temptation. Here's the lust. And then you and Adam will be gods and you'll be just like God. And you'll know the difference between good and bad. <laughs> then the next verse, verse six, shows us that she yielded to the temptation. So when the woman saw, whenever that was, the woman saw the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took 
of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her and he did eat. Hmm. This was bad news for humanity because we just read in Romans, this is when death passed upon humanity. I've let people know, listen, when, if you've never accepted Jesus, God's not holding your sins against you. It's not your sin that causes you to die and go to hell. It's Adam's sin. Death caused, uh, death was passed upon all men. So, so man in his original state when he sinned passed death to all men. So when human beings are born, they're born into that death. When they reach the age of accountability, pff, death fastens upon them. So you're not, you know, if you reject Jesus, you're not going to go to hell because of what you've done wrong. You're going to hell because the sin nature was passed to you and that's why Jesus said you've got to be born again. You got to have another birth. You got to be born twice. Just like you died twice, you got to be born twice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, well, well, we're going to have to pick up this. We, we've, we've run out of time again. This is good stuff, though. I'm telling you, it's going to help us understand the things we need to understand about Satan so that we can live the abundant life, so that we can rule and reign in this life. Amen. All right. I love you. I appreciate you watching. Share this program with others. And thank you for supporting the program. If you're not a partner yet, man, become a partner and help us reach more people for Jesus. We sure love you. And we would we, we, say, man, have a wonderful day. God intends for believers to be able to apply his word to their daily lives and get good results, living the joyful, loving and abundant life that Jesus has provided for us. Believers are supposed to understand the Bible and be able to enjoy the blessings of heaven while we are here on the earth. But many believers, at the beginning of their new life in Jesus, did not learn the most basic foundational truths of the Bible that will carry them over all of the traps and pitfalls and on into victorious, limitless life in Christ. In this new book, Dr. Hutton addresses all the issues that every Christian must come to know, understand, and establish as true in order to lead a limitless life in Jesus. To order your copy of Limitless Life with Jesus, go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org or you can call 888-887-WORD.